Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today it's time for another breakfast chat. And today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about conjugate. Yes, the bird is chirping outside. I know many of you have never heard a bird before. You live in parts of the world where you don't have birds. So it's, it's like really new and entertaining. Um, we have birds in Texas. They're very, very common. This one starts chirping as soon as I turn on the lights because they've got a nest on my porch. Uh, and I leave them alone. I'm not going to hurt these birds or anything just because they want to chirp. That's just stupid. So, also, I've had a bunch of people ask, Hey, Jason, why do you wake up so early? I don't have a choice. I go to bed really early. And I sleep somewhere between five and seven hours. And then I wake up with my brain racing. So I have to do something productive. So I cook food. While my food's cooking, I answer clients, look at any spreadsheets, look at their lifting videos. Because if when I go to bed, I'm going to have a minimum. A minimum of five or six clients who've sent me messages or something while I've been sleeping. Every single day. It's going to happen. So it lets me work on that. Get these videos done. I get some food in, some carbs. I get sleepy again. And I go, go back to sleep for another two or three hours. All right? I, and sometimes more. So I average about nine hours total. Uh, and I just make that work. because My brain needs something to do. It just happens to me. I'll wake up at midnight, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So I get up and work for about an hour. So it takes me about an hour to get all this done, maybe an hour and a half. I get a lot done work-wise and I go back to bed. And it works well for me. So let's talk about conjugate. I've had a lot of people say, hey, Jason, a lot of gyms are opening up where I'm at. Because again, like my UK people, the gyms there tend to be very limited. Or I get people who are like, I'm in a box gym. I don't have many bars. I don't have bands. I don't have chains. How am I supposed to run this system? Or people who have a very limited home gym. And, you know, this is really simple. The thing that confuses people is the maxes. Because I put out multiple free conjugate templates. They're all there. I've got playlists. You can type conjugate into my channel search engine to find tons of videos on conjugate. Okay. Just type conjugate in the channel search engine. Every channel on YouTube has a search engine where you can search that specific channel. And so I've put out free templates and things. And people say, well, how do I make this work? Well, you can do... Your speed work with straight weight, okay? Not a big deal. Ideally, the perfect world, you have bands for it most of the time. Not everyone has that. You could set up light bands, though, and just get some bands. You can attach them to plates, dumbbells, whatever. You just won't be able to do really heavy bands. But let's come over to the maxes. The maxes are what throw people off. They're like, you have to have all these exercises to max on. And people need to understand. Um, some of my clients, I've had to explain to them because they don't watch these videos, What's the special purpose of this one max? Well, we can have special purposes and benefits we do from a max variation, right? We can have them, but it's not necessary. As long as we have different lifts, we are have different lifts to track for our PRs. We can find associations between our different lifts. We get strong at different angles and strength curves for maximum strength. And we learn how to max out because maxing out is a skill, right? If I teach you how to max on 10 different types of presses or 10 different types of squats, it's going to have better carryover to your back squat than doing a bunch of rep work at 80%. Well, it's going to have more carryover to your max. And that's just a reality because it's more specific. However, if we rotate max lifts all the time, we get lower overuse injuries. We also get a better psychology because we train our brains to think that we PR all the time. If you have 10 different squats you rotate through and you PR on them, even if it's just five pounds or two kilos, every time you do them, you program your brain to PR. It also lets you know when you're ready to PR on different lifts. Okay, If, you, if your floor press is always 10 pounds lighter than your bench press and you come in and set a 10-pound floor press PR, you know that your bench press just went up 10 pounds. And then you can go test it. It lets you find these patterns. But the thing is, we just need different lifts to max on. And all we need to do is change grip, stance, and range of motion. If you just have a barbell, if you have a power bar, an Olympic bar, which actually if you have a true Olympic bar, squatting and benching and deadlifting are not going to be as good as you think they are with that bar. Uh, but if you have a power bar, it means you have neural in the center. You have 32 inch rings. It's a little thicker. Doesn't whip as much. It's a power bar. It's what most gyms have. Okay, what can we do? Uh, change your, your grips on your bench. You have five different grips you can use. We have closed grip, medium, 
normal, which would be pinkies on the rings, wide, and you can have illegal wide. Not everyone should be maxing on illegal wide, though, by the way. Depends on your shoulder health. That's five different lifts. They're all a bench press. You could do pin presses. Now, the problem with pin presses is that we need to find our ideal grip usually. Because that's one of the perks. We find our ideal bar, bar path and grip where the, we're the strongest with it. And that tells us a lot of times where we'll be strongest out of the bottom of the bench. So sometimes we don't want to change grips on a pen press, but we can change heights. Depending on how your rack and safeties are set up, you can do a dead pen bench at two or three different heights. So you can set it for, for three different heights, depending upon your setup. So now we have eight different lifts you can max on. How about if you have access to an incline bench? It's another one. You could, you could change grips. I wouldn't do the really wide incline, though. None of this illegal wide or wide. You could do pinkies on rings, medium grip, close grip. Three more presses you've added in. You could do an overhead press. You could do overhead presses from pins at different heights. Now, if you listen to what I just said, I probably gave you 15 different presses you can press on. You can go 15 weeks in a row without repeating the same press. Then we have floor press. Do that at different grips. You could technically test the floor press at four different grip widths. It's all a different lift and max on. We're up to close to 20 movements. You can go 20 weeks without repeating the same max if you don't want to. We're good. See how easy that is? How about squats? Box squats. And a lot of you don't have good boxes at your gym, but if you do, a lot of people have three different height boxes. A lot of my lifters, a lot of my lifters who only had access to a power bar, no specialty bars, bands, or chains, we test forward up to four different box heights, right? You have a deep box down deep below parallel, a parallel box, we can have one slightly above parallel, we have a high box. We test maxes on all those. We can do dead pen squats, different heights, okay? You can have three different heights of dead pen squats, Easily, different range of motion. We're on a different lift. Now, people say front squats. I don't think most lifters, if they don't train the front squat, should probably not max on the front squat. Not going to go as well as you think. You're going to be too limited by your uh, rack position. If you train the front squat all the time, you could. How about we do pause squats? We could test a pause squat versus a back squat because we can test the back squat too. Right? And we can test a pause squat. So if, we got, if you set up four different height boxes and you can stack plates to different heights if you're sitting on plates, you can add plates, subtract plates to a smaller box. Four different heights, three different pen presses, back squat, pause squat. It's like nine squats. How about a zercher squat that takes us to 10? How about a zercher from the floor? 11 different squats with just a straight bar, no bands or chains. Easy. How about on your boxes, we have wide and narrower. We've now added four more squats. You're up to 15 squats with just a straight bar. You can max on every one of these. Just track them separately. They all, they all are their own max. How about deadlifting? Well, people are like, well, sumo and conventional. Really? All you can come up with? How about you get you either pads or you take you some little blocks to the gym, get you some one-inch thick planks? Two of them. We can now do one inch deficits by standing on it for sumo on each plate. You do one inch deficit. Of course, you can do that standing on plates too. You can do a one inch deficit on a conventional. You can put those boards, those planks under the plates. We now have a block pull. That's now six deadlifts that we have just by bringing those. How about a snatch grip deadlift? How about a Romanian deadlift? Now, this is before we even start doing stuff like even bigger deficits and blocks. If we can change all those another inch. If you've got enough stuff, you can add another inch easily. But let's assume you don't. you just got a pair of one-inch little blocks you can take to the gym with you in your gym bag on, on deadlift day. All right. But we're up to eight deadlifts. Then we get over to the rack. Get to the rack. You can do rack pulls from a low pin position. I bet you most racks are set up to where you could probably have three different pen heights you could do a max from. Again, depending upon the rack, 
Your gym's not well enough set up though for that. It's probably time to change gyms. Find a different gym at this point. But let's say you got three different rack heights. You can do all of those conventional or sumo. That's six more deadlifts you have. These are all different lifts. And it doesn't matter that the range of motion is the same. It's a different pull. People say, well, what if those are the same as my block height? And what if it's only an inch off the floor? Pens and blocks are a different pull. It feels different. The strength curve is different. It's a different max. Start adding this up. We're, we're past a dozen deadlifts. We're past a dozen deadlifts you can do with just a straight bar, no bands, no chains. You could technically even test your double overhand deadlift. All right, it's not that hard. Just be creative, guys. You can come up with different variations to test your maxes on on ME days to where you can go months without testing the same lift again if you need to so that you can PR every single time. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.